Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Zebra Pens F701 right here. Um, it's a very interesting little piece, and uh, actually, no, it's not very interesting at all. That's a cliche. I say that every time, but this doesn't really apply in this case. But it is a pen, certainly, and we're going to take a look at it. First off, size comparison. Here it is against a boring pen that I sh uh, lifted from a Hampton Inn. Here it is against a, uh, a generic Bic Click stick pen. So you can see it's actually very similarly sized. If you like one of these guys in terms of size, you're probably probably going to like one of these guys, too. Um, here it is against one of my favorite higher-end pens. This is the Urban Survival Gear Tie Scribe Bolt, uh, which is about 10 times as expensive as this guy. Um, and then here we have the uh, Pocket Jotter, which is one of my favorite lower-end pens, uh, which is just a little bit more expensive than this guy. And I'll be talking about the comparison a little more directly. So anyways, um, let's go on ahead and talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this um, little pen right here. So on the good side, the clip on this guy is good. I mean, seriously, you can see it here. It's a piece of steel. It's got a nice ramp to it. It works well. It's easy to rebend. You can just unscrew this plastic portion up here. If it ever, you know, if the clip bends on you, you can fix that. that that's a nice thing. I like that very much. Next thing, um, when it comes to actually writing here, I'll, I'll, I'll write out writing for you. That way you know what's going on here. This is a fine refill. It's okay. I'll write fine so you know that. Again, and I'll put a little flourish underneath there. The thing is, it requires a little bit of pressure, but the thing is, I'm just kind of very, very lightly dragging this along the page, and I'm still getting the lines. So that's not, that, that's a decent enough test. And if we compare that to your big click stick sort of thing, here we're not really getting much of anything, so it is a little bit better than your average bit clicky, sticky thing, so that, that that's a good thing. I um, can't argue with that particularly. Next thing, um, this uh, is a, uh, it's a pen with some very nice knurling. I mean, this little area down here, you can see here, it's got all this little texturing going on. That's nice. Um, and it means that particularly in sticky situations, oh, well, not sticky so much as lubricated situations, like if you're working in a Vaseline factory, right here, this is your freaking pen. Um, and that knurling is a beautiful thing, absolutely. 100%. And then finally, on the uh, on the good side, this guy is five bucks or so, uh, which you can't really argue with that. Um, I mean, five bucks is cheap enough that you're almost like, oh, I lost my pen. I don't really care. I don't want to lose five bucks, but at the same time, this is a pen that if lost is not really a tragedy. It's just, uh, it happens. And so that, that's a nice thing. I always like that. And so a, a nice, inexpensive pen, that, that, that's pretty nice. Um, and so to me, at least, all of that is the good on this guy is that it's about five bucks or so. It's got some nice nerve down here. The refill works fine for writing. It's not what I'd want to write every damn day with all the time, but it works okay. And the clip on it is good, easy enough to rebend. To me, what's great about this guy is the construction on it. It is mostly metal. In fact, the only piece of plastic externally is this little collar right up here, which is weird, and then inside the top of this guy, which is also weird. But look, as a result, it's got some nice heft to it. It's it's not a lightweight pen. It's got a little bit of something to it there. Here, I'll put it on the scale here, and we'll, uh, that's in grams. Well, sure, enjoy some uh, some real units for a second there. Go back to ounces, 0.73 ounces. Um, as opposed to the Parker Jotter, which comes in at 0.5, this just, this feels a little bit more weighty and substantial. It's also a very durable and strong pen, which is not a really, it's not something you have to think about a great deal, but if this is in your pocket, for instance, this is not particularly going to break. And this is for people who do think about pens as weapons, which is a thing, apparently. This is a pen that is, you know, it's pokey. Um, absolutely, this this is not something I would like to be poked with. And so there you go. Congratulations. Um, but as a result, this all-metal construction is nice, and that's probably the best thing this pen's got going for it. That's what's great. On the bad side, a couple of things. Um, to start with, it is using a kind of weird proprietary refill. Is it weird? Well, no, probably not. But it's not It's not a refill that everybody else is using. Um, this is the, the Zebra F looks like F070.7. There you go. Um, and it's just a refill that you can buy online. Look, I found them for like two bucks each online. Um, that, that, that's fine. That's well and good. But the problem is that why are you using a weird proprietary refill rather than a standard sort of refill like this little guy, the Parker Jotter here? It's not that much bigger, but uh, I'm sorry, the Parker Style refill. But as a result, um, it's just, it's a lesser pen in my estimation. It's a lot easier to find the Parker refill than it is to find one for this guy, and that to me is always going to be a fault. I like a refill that I can find and that I can buy cheaply and that I can get variety and whatnot in. So a, a one-company lock-in refill never really appeals to me. Then finally, on the bad side, there's not that much bad here. Frankly, there's just not that much here. It's got this unsatisfying click to it. I mean, it's okay. 
But it, it doesn't, it, it feels a little bit wimpy. It's just like, yeah, it clicked, yeah, it clicked. There. Look, I'm being completely ridiculous here, but compared to something like this, oh, yeah, that's a click right there. This is not, uh, it feels, frankly, this feels like a more satisfying, better click than this guy has. So I'm not a big fan of that. And if you're buying a pen that, that, that for craftsmanship rather than just to write things, because if you're just buying to write things, buy 150 of these for the same price. Um, I mean, th 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 then you want that. And so that unsatisfying clip is bad. And th those two things to me are the bad here. That it's got the unsatisfying click and a weird proprietary refill. On the, on the ugly front, to me, honestly, what's ugly is this little plastic bit here. It just says Indonesia, because I gather that was where this was made. Or maybe they really like Indonesia. Maybe the maker of this pen had a wonderful holiday there. I don't freaking know. But anyways, um, it, 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 it's Indonesia. on the And then there's just this one piece of just plastic on this otherwise beautifully metallic pen. And it just strikes me as why, why, why not go the extra mile, guys? Why, why? Why'd you stop there? Why, why, you know, charge $5.10 and put a real metal cap there. Then this becomes all metal construction. Maybe they'd get a better clicker. And in fact, a number of people talk about, well, if you buy the other, this is the Zebra, I think 401, you swap the, 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 the clicker out from there, you get a nice brass clicker in there. But it's like, why, is it, would you, yeah, or you could just buy a pen that's worth a damn. Anyways, I digress. But as a result, I, just having this one plastic mechanism in here is just like, you ran to the finish line and then just like thump fell over. And that's not doing it for me. So final conclusion, look, this is a fine pen. It works. It does what it needs to. It'll absolutely write. You can grab one of these guys, use it till it dies, and for five bucks, you either buy some more refills or you buy another pen if you're all American about it and whatnot. Um, but that's not a that's not a great thing. I mean, ultimately, this isn't a pen that I, I loved carrying. I mean, it was fine. It worked. It did the trick. But frankly, I would rather carry this little guy. This is the pocket jotter. This is a pen that I, I make no bones about freaking loving. But the thing is, it's great because although it is a little bit more expensive, particularly with a gel ink cartridge in there, it feels more metallic. The entire thing is metal. There is just not a bit of plastic to be found except, you know, at the top of the refill and whatnot. Um, it is a little bit lighter, which in some ways is nice in a shirt pocket. It has a much more compelling click to it. It's got a, a refill that you can find at any given office supply store. It's a little pricey, like I said, but it just feels a lot better. And if you hand me these two objects in the morning and you say, hey, Nick, pick one of these guys, guess what? I'm going Jotter every damn day of the week. And so ultimately, oh, sorry. And reviewing what the heart wants rather than what the review demands. Uh, so ultimately, that's kind of my, my feeling on this, guys. Yeah, it's a fine pen. It'll serve you well. It's okay. But you know what? That token, this is a fine pen. It'll serve you well. It's okay. And if you're looking for style, you're looking for something a little bit more interesting, there are much better options out there in the pen world. So there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. And I hope I made the right call here and that when you hear hoofbeats, you're going to think horses, not zebra. Uh, uh, okay. Have a good one, everybody. Bye now.